All right, here we go again for two fat guys working out. So this is week one for those of you who don't know, and this is my first leg night of the week. It's Wednesday. I split my legs up into two groups. Uh, Wednesday, I work my quads, and then on Saturday, I work my hamstrings because I cannot put 100% effort into both of them. I can only put about half effort into both of them if I do them on the same day. It's just too much exhaustion from the size of the muscles and the movements that you do. It's just a lot of energy output. So we start with leg extensions and we like to get a nice static hold at the top with a nice squeeze and a slow negative. We do four sets of 15 to 20 on these, starting off light, gradually working our weight, our, our weight up. Normally we start with 25 and work up to 100. And like I said, we try to keep the rain, the reps at the same speed with a nice hold at the top and a slow negative at the bottom. This is just to get blood in the knee and pump the quad up because really I'm just trying to pre-exhaust my legs so that way whenever I move on to the next exercise, my quads are already pretty much ready to go. So here we're going to do the hack squat. Uh, this right here I'll do for four sets of 12, 8 to 12. I try to get over 12 if I can, but I try to pick a weight that I will fail with at 12 reps and I nailed it perfectly on this one. I went for a 13th rep and it just wasn't in the bag. So I hit it actually perfect with the weight tonight. Now remember this is my first week back from my deload. And the funny thing is, is, you know, normally when I was powerlifting and I took a week off from powerlifting, I was able to come back in the next week and lift heavier weights more aggressively and felt, felt way stronger and way more powerful and explosive. Now, bodybuilding and doing the high volume and the high reps, it's a lot of cardio conditioning. So taking a week off from doing cardio and doing all the high reps and all the high volume, my fatigue was a lot higher. So like uh, I got winded a lot sooner than what I was the week before I took the, uh, uh, my week off. So the weights felt heavier and my lungs had a hard time keeping up with uh, all the volume and stuff like that. But give it about two, three weeks, four weeks, I'll be back to where I was with the volume and be able to rep out the, you know, rep out that much weight for more reps and more sets without getting so fatigued. It's just something you have to slowly build into. And plus guys, I'm not in a hurry to get hurt. I don't care about how much weight is on the bar. I could really care less. Nobody cares how much you lift when you're bodybuilding and you're doing for aesthetics and for the physique. They only care if you look like you can lift heavy, not that you can actually lift heavy. So uh, Richard's doing really well. This is his first week back, so he uh, he's pushing it, giving it all his all he has. And I think honestly, um, you can look at it one of two ways: like he's doing too much, and he needs to ease into it and kind of slowly work his way into the weights and the reps and the sets and increase over time. Or you can just dive in the deep end and you know sink or swim and. Start out the gate strong and hard, and he's not going to sit back and, and slowly increment into it. He's going to try to jump into it and match me for uh, set for rep. Now, of course, he can't do pound for pound, but he can match me rep for set, and that's what he's going to do. So after the hack squat, <clears throat> uh, we move on to leg press, and we're doing the exact same thing, nice slow negatives. I know it's still in the hack squat here, but getting a little ahead of myself. But anyway, so... Uh, we do nice slow negatives on these and then we try to do a controlled positive with a squeeze at the top. Uh, this sled is a little awkward getting on because the way that it's set up, once you're on it, you can't really unlock the pin and then try to slide down into your position. You have to set your position, then you have to try to sit back into it and then get into position. So it kind of makes it difficult if you got a belly or if you're fat and gross like myself so I can't get the sled as deep as I'd like. I would like to go a lot deeper on these because I love going deep, but unfortunately I can't. But I tell you the truth, with this short range of motion, I feel this 100% in my quad and only in my quad. I don't feel it in my knees. I don't feel it in my hips. I don't feel it anywhere except for exactly where I want to feel it, and that's the inside teardrop and the head of the quad. So I don't care that it's only a partial range of motion because I'm still feeling it in the muscle 100%. And I just enjoy the way they feel, to be completely honest. So <clears throat> we'll talk about the reps and stuff like that. So again, a lot of people might say that we're doing too many reps and too many sets and too many exercises, and we don't need this much variety, and you don't need this. Watch Richard here. Look, look, look how he has to do it. So he had to grab onto the top there and pull himself in, and it's just un really uncomfortable starting off like that. So anyway, so so like I said, um, <clears throat> a lot of people want to talk about volume, but I, I just think that I'm able to recover from this much volume because I'm not going ham on the cardio. 
I think if I was doing a lot of cardio, I wouldn't be able to do this much volume. And I'd rather do a lot more volume in the gym lifting weights than spending a lot of time on a piece of cardio equipment. Because to me, lifting weights is fun. It's like a playground for adults, to be honest. Um, you can look at it however you want. Oh, it's for my health or it's something I have to do. And it's for my, you know, my, my joints and mobility and blah, 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 blah. But really, I mean, you should be having fun when you're in there. You really should be having fun. If you're not having fun, man, look at the size of his stomach. Sorry, guys. I just got to look at the size of that, man. He's like a potato. Look how fat he is, man. He's just so freaking fat, man. And and it's amazing because over the next couple of weeks, you're going to be able to see in the next couple of months, you're going to see him go from potato to like a French fry to a potato chip. You know, you're going to go from a full potato to a potato wedge to a french fry, to a potato chip. I guess that's the scale of potatoes from fatness to leanness. And I guess a ruffled potato chip would be the most ripped one. And it's going to be amazing watching his transformation over the next couple of months and him losing all that size and that belly and, and just getting fit and in shape. Man, I'm super excited for him. I hope he sticks with it. So back to what I was saying. So I truly believe that you should find what's fun for you to do in the gym, regardless if you're doing it for mobility, you're doing it for your health, you're doing it for size, you're doing it for endurance. It does not matter what you're doing it for. Whatever you're in the gym for the reason of, like it should be fun. You should enjoy the lifts that you're doing. You should enjoy what you're with the amount of reps, the sets, the volume, the weight. If you're going heavy and you're not enjoying it, stop going heavy, man. Start doing more reps and more volume. If you're doing a lot of volume and a lot of reps and you just and you're not having fun and you want to reduce the reps because the the volume's just it's just tedious and annoying to you, drop the volume, do less reps, do less sets, do more intensity. You know, you, you don't have to be like dogma and so locked into a program and a routine and reps and sets that you can't experience, experiment and move around your routine and be like, you know what, I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now and I don't even like the way these movements feel. I hate these movements. Change the movements out. Don't do something that you don't like doing because you're not going to stick to it. It's just like your diet. If you get on a diet and you're eating food that you generally don't like eating, but you're doing it because you feel like you have to do it, the probability of you sticking to that food is likely to none, right? So if you pick foods that you enjoy eating naturally and you enjoy those foods, like for me, I like eating yogurt, bananas, blueberries. I like eating red meat, a lot of ground meat, rice, uh, beef stock, salad, egg whites. These are foods that I normally eat even if I'm not working out or powerlifting or bodybuilding or whatever. They're just foods that I actually generally enjoy eating that I grew up, especially cornbread. I love cornbread. I grew up on cornbread and okra and I don't really eat those that much, but whenever I, I have a, a craving for it, I will get down on some, some cornbread. But anyways, so your workout is exactly like your diet. If you're eating foods that you do not want to eat, you're just suffering through it. Eventually you're going to stop suffering through it and you're going to start eating something else. If you're doing a workout that you don't enjoy doing it and you're suffering through it and your hips are hurting or your knees are hurting, or it's just not a comfortable movement. It doesn't feel good to you. You're not going to keep doing it. It's like I said, it should be like a kid at the playground. If you like the swing, go to the swing. If you like the monkey bars, go to the monkey bars. If you want to go down the slide, go down the slide. If you want to do all three of them, do all three of them. There's nothing that says that you can't move around and enjoy yourself. See, like for me, a movement that I absolutely hate is lunges. I hate lunges. I absolutely hate these when they hurt my knees. These don't hurt my knees no more because I fixed my hip and my mobility issue so I can do them without any knee pain. So now I enjoy doing them. I didn't do these for years because I hated them because of the pain in my knees. I don't feel it on my knees no more. I feel it in my quads 100% or my hamstrings or my glutes, wherever it is I'm trying to target because depending on how you do your lunge is depending on where you're, where you're going to feel it. If you allow your knee to travel over your foot, you're going to get more quad. If you allow your foot to travel out in front of your knee, you're going to get more hamstring and glute. So it just depends on the leg that's forward, not the leg that's backwards. So if his leg that's forward, if his foot is way out in front of his knee or even like parallel up and down to his knee, that's going to be more hip and hamstring and glute. If his foot is behind his knee, then that's going to be more quad. If you step to the outside of your foot, you're going to get more outer sweep. You step to the inside of your foot, you're going to get more of the teardrop and inner thigh. At least that's how it feels for my quads whenever I'm doing these. Play around with them where you push off on your foot and where you step and how you step and where your knee position to your ankle and foot is to see the different variety of how these can feel. I wouldn't do them if I didn't like them. Just like these, this is my favorite calf exercise right here. I absolutely love doing these because you don't have to worry about dipping your heels way below parallel. You're just trying to get a 
top contraction, get on the ball of the foot, hold it on the ball of the foot and not come back down. Hold it for about two to three seconds if you can, and then come back down. This is difficult because it requires a lot of balance. And if you don't have strong calves and ankles and tendons and ligaments, you're not going to have the stabilization to be able to hold it a long time at the top, which is going to make you wobbly like him. But as you get stronger and you get better, you can hold it longer and you can hold it better. And then you can get longer contractions and harder contractions. Doesn't require a lot of weight. Calves are one of those funny muscles, man. Like I can't tell you how to train yours specifically to get them big, but I can tell you whatever you're doing, if it's not working, change it up. If you're doing a lot of volume and you're not growing, do less volume, do more static holds. But for me on those, I do four sets of 20 holding at the top with a hard contraction, slow, negative, hard contraction, slow, negative, hard contraction every single time. And that's the way I train my calves. I don't do a lot of sets. Now, calves are probably the only body part. I only do four to five sets twice a week. So maybe 10 sets total for the week. And it's not because I think that's too much volume and they're going to get too much volume. If I wasn't doing cardio, I would be training my calves like I do everything else. But because I'm doing the Stairmaster every single day, I only train my calves with 10 sets a week roughly because with me stepping up on the calf, it's like doing a calf race every time I do a step on the Stairmaster with 230 some odd pounds. And if I do too much um, cardio and too much calves, my calves dwindle away. I found this out over the years. So whenever I was lifting weights with no cardio and training the crap out of my calves, my calves would grow like wildfire. But then whenever I'd keep training my calves like that and start doing a whole lot of cardio, I would just cardio the crap out of my calves. So whenever I reduce the weight or I reduce the reps and sets and I increase the volume and I decrease the volume, increase the intensity and went heavier with slow, longer, harder contractions, and then I did a lot of volume for the Stairmaster or, car, or whatever I was doing, my calves would continue to stay their size and or get bigger. So no body part works the same for everybody and no body part can really be trained. However, well, and, and it's counter, right? This is kind of like um, contradictory, right? Well, you said you do 16 sets per body part per exercise, but I do use different volumes by, by volume. I mean, weight, right? So like it's the amount of load you put on the muscle, how much weight you move total volume. Like if you do 100 reps for uh, 10 reps, that's 1,000 pounds with the volume. If you do 200 pounds for 10 reps, that's 2,000 pounds of total volume you moved. So you can look at it as total volume or you can look at it as how many reps or how many sets. There's so many different ways to, to measure volume. And if you're doing more or the same or less or whatever, and again, there's no, no reason to get into a training program that is like dogma where it's like a, like a religion where you cannot break it and do something different if you don't feel like something's working for you. Now, with that being said, I don't think that you should like program jump. So if you start a program and then you're not getting like any type of joint pain or knee pain or shoulder or elbow pain and the movements feel good and smooth and fluid, don't do it for like three weeks and say this program doesn't work. It's trash. You have to give it a legitimate three to six months of hard, dedicated training on a program to legitimately say, yes, I saw results. No, I did not see results. And if you didn't see results, was it because you were really giving it 100% on that routine? And if you were giving it 100%, were you dieting 100%? Were you not dieting? Were you dieting 50% of the time? Or were you not taking the diet serious enough where you were just lollygagging on that and then blaming the routine for not giving you results? Or was your diet on point, but you're in the gym and you're tired and you are you were like, you know, giving it half-hearted workouts while you were in the gym? You know, so don't do a program for three weeks and start dogging a program, someone's program and saying, oh, your program's trash, it doesn't work. You have to give it three to six months of legitimate, true, hard effort. Because to be honest with you, any diet you can stick to, it's probably the diet that's going to work best for you. Any program that you will stick to, whether it's powerlifting, bodybuilding, strongman, calisthenics, cardio, it doesn't matter. The one that you find the most enjoyable and you like more than anything and it's the one that you will stick to, that is going to be the one that's going to work 100% best for you and what you want for your goals. So, but that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I didn't get too far off track on the rant there. And uh, we'll be posting another chest and back video tomorrow. Thank you for watching.